You see, if someone believes there is a God, if someone believes they're a child of God, then they'll act like a child of God. The Bible says love your enemies. That's what a child of God does. The Bible says pray for those who persecute you. That's what a child of God does. The Bible says love your brother. That's what a child of God does. And will not perish but have eternal life. The Bible says that there is no way to heaven except for, the, except for Christ. The Bible teaches us that Christ sacrificed his life for the sins of all mankind. Matter of fact, the Bible says that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that God, or that Jesus Christ took, took our sins upon him. The Bible says that he took our sins upon him, but yet he was sinless. There was no sin found in him. So that's, this is a beautiful thing. God actually gives you like a get out of hell free card. So all you got to do is believe in him and you can be set free. You can be set free from your bondage. The Bible says who the son sets free is free indeed. A lot of us are, wonder, are walking around in bondage. We're walking around in, 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 in prison, in an invisible prison. Like a, uh, 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 some, of, some of us are in bondage to alcohol. Some of us are in bondage to weed. Some of us are in bondage to crack, to heroin, to methamphetamine. All these things are a manifestation of the heart. It means that there's something wrong in your life. You, you've come to the point where you know that there is something missing. There's a void in your life. There's something that's, that's, that, 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 that um, you're incomplete. There's something that, that you know is missing out of your life. So what you try to do is you try to, substitute. You try to substitute it with alcohol. You try to substitute it with crack. You try to substitute it with uh, methamphetamines, with alcohol, even with weed. But I'm here to try to tell you today that you can get rid of all the substitutions. You can get rid of all the imitations and you can call on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you call on the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll set you free. And when he sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Amen. Talking about women. Okay, brother, quick question. So, you um, know how you're mentioning about uh, people who uh, see other people on TV and because they want to be like them, they emulate them and that's a sign of low confidence. So. Can you explain to me how a person can go, get over that when they can grow up in an environment and see TV and see music videos and etc. and naturally gravitate to that, naturally see that and be like, whoa, that looks cool, I want to be like that. I'm sure we've all experienced it, I've experienced it growing up. So now that I'm older and etc., how can we like, how, in people in general, how can we adapt out of that or still, still be naturally, uh, uh, naturally, naturally be ourselves when that's something that everybody naturally gravitates to from a young child? Um, so what that is, is is role models. Like so, people when people uh, when people are watching these people on TV, they're they're subconsciously or consciously making this person their role model, right? And we all we all have role models. So our first role models are our father and our mother, our uncles, our grandfathers. You know what I mean? And then as we grow older, we we they put us in front of TV, and the, and these these TV personalities become our role models. So then. What, what I would say is that we all do need somebody to, to model our, our behavior or to um, lift or to, to watch and mimic, right? As, until we become grown men. And so I would take the route of mimicking Jesus. So, so instead, so that's what I did. Like I used to like Tupac. I used, I, used to keep, I used to cut my hair bald, put bandanas on my head and sag my pants. You know what I mean? For a long time. And then, and then Tupac died and I liked to rock. So I used to work out a lot and I would just walk around like this trying to make, move my eyebrows. You know what I mean? And then I found Christ, you know what I mean? And I, and I was like, well, then the Bible says that our identity should be wrapped up in him. And Christ is God, you know what I mean? And, and he says that my identity, if when I accept him, that he is my identity. So now my identity is God. My, my identity is the creator of the whole universe, right? And I become a son of the creator of the whole universe. That's way better than Tupac. That's way better than The Rock. That's way better than all these people. And the thing is, we, uh, uh, as naturally we want, we want to better things in life. Like when I watch Raptors, uh, rappers, I wanted to better things. I wanted to drive a Bentley. I want, I wanted to shoes. I wanted to chains. But the, the greatest, the greatest thing in life that you can be is a child of God. And there's no one greater than God. So why? So if we want the better thing in life, why not model our behavior um, behind or after the after the greatest thing that was ever ever that's ever, ever been, which is Jesus, which is God, right? And then God also says he gives you his Holy Spirit. So that means I have the power of God living inside of me, right? And, and that's more empowering than anything. It's more empowering than any chain on my neck. It's more empowering than any car I can drive. I have the, the, the creator of the universe living inside of me, directing my path. I'm not saying this in any term of, of, of race, uh, racial uh, uh, um, comp comparison, but I'm saying this as a, a real fact, a biblical fact. Um, what would you say to the people who have an image of um, Jesus, 
but they have it how the world sees him as um, a Caucasian man, kind of like a little bit uh, really uh, uh, subtle and, 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 and soft and kind and nice hearted but strong and smart and wise and all these things. When the Bible describes him differently, the Bible describes him actually as a black man, actually a man, a man of war, actually a man who uh, 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 yeah, who um, did miracles and signs and all these different things, and was 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 kind-hearted to people, of course. But when people crossed him in the in the Old Testament, he would do things that were very very serious and and, 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 and scary, even. You know what I mean? So how would you want people to like? Like, like that being said, like, what would you just what would you tell the people who want to be like the Lord but have the wrong idea of how He actually is? Yeah, I would tell them to read the Bible because a lot of people don't read the Bible. Those people actually, you know, those, those people that you know, the, the first, the first time they depict. First of all, Jesus says, "Don't depict him." It says, "Make no graven image of things uh, in heaven and things in, in earth and things under the earth." So that means make no graven images of anything that we don't know. That we don't know what angels look like. We shouldn't be drawn. We don't know what God looks like. We shouldn't be drawn. We don't know what Jesus looked like. We shouldn't be making any images of him. The first. The, Yeah, people do say that, yeah, but but really, if the Bible the Bible describes angels as light, so how how can you just how can you draw light? I see partially. All right, brother. Oh, okay. Um, so that's one thing. The first and the first the angel Saxon Jesus was was erected by I think the first person was to do it. It's, it's really a, uh, the angel Saxon Jesus is really a model after Zeus. Zeus with the long wavy hair and the white face, and and really uh, the first time that the, the six the, there was a dude named Michelangelo. He he painted the Sixteenth Chapel. The first time he painted the Sixteenth Chapel, he made all the figures brown to match the the Bible version. And the dude and the priest came to him and said that the white man will not worship a, a brown saint or a brown or a brown god. And so they changed the color, right? But that just just because they do that, that don't make it right, or that don't make um that don't make Jesus white. I mean, that don't make Jesus soft. That don't nothing. The, the, that's why we. That's why it's important to read the the uh, the manuscript or read the record that we have of Jesus, which it does say that he was all these things. He was loving. He was in the Old Testament. That God, you know, um, did a lot of things uh, that was justified, but but it was a different reasoning. So under the Old Testament, we had, it was different, right? Under the Old Testament, we had different uh, God handled God um, handled or dealt with the people in a different way. And then Jesus came. When Jesus came, the Bible says Jesus brought uh, grace, so we can. Um, we could actually also said Jesus took the wrath of God. There was a lot of wrath of God in the Old Testament because there was no mediator between God and man. So God had to treat us like children. Tell us a few times, you know, what's right or wrong, and then when we got out of line, had to chastise us, right? But now the, the chastisement of, of God has been put upon Jesus. So now we're under grace, and now we're, um, we have a grace period, and we have a, a choice to come to God. And, and, because, and because our punishment was, was taken upon Jesus, God's wrath is, is appeased now, you know what I mean? So now we just roll with the new covenant, and the new covenant gives us grace to go boldly before the, before the throne of God. Amen, brother. God bless you, brother. Amen. Quite simply, do you believe that this man over here is a bad person? Yes. You do? Yes. Do you know, let me ask, let me ask you a question now. What, is, what, is, what, is, what does the word good mean? Well, the meaning of good is very relative. Very no, no, we have dictionaries, and, and tell me the meaning of good. I am actually not, um, let's say, common with the dictionary definition of good, because for me, being good might be very different from being good to anyone else. And my actual question is, why care? Okay, wait, does, does wait, wait let's, not, let's not move under there right there. Let's stay right here. Why he's not good is because good is the absence of bad, just like light is the absence of dark. So when you're good, it means there's no bad in you. So the minute that you do something bad, you're no longer good according to the definition of good. So you understand? Uh, human being, I'm pretty sure he's lied before. Is lying a good thing? No, it's not. He's probably stole. Everyone steals maybe a, a quarter here, uh, uh, something here. He's probably had lust in his heart towards a woman. That's not a good thing. So the minute that you have one thing that's not good, right, well, then then you're no longer you're no longer good in God's eyes. Good means it's absent of bad. I did not ask if he was good. I asked if he was a bad person. You said unequivocally that he That's was a bad person. Have you ever lied? That's the devil talking! We made mistake as him. Right have, have you ever lied? There's the devil right there! Is lying a good thing or a bad thing? There's the devil right there! I listen to the devil right there! Is lying a good thing or a bad thing? I ask you, does lying make you a bad person? Yes, it makes you a liar. Have you ever lied? Yes. Are you a bad person? Yes. Okay, I do not think that people are bad in their general being. What I do think is completely irrelevant, though, is how 
God affects our actions if our actions are inherently good anyway. What do you mean? Well, the thing is, if you live your life and you don't do more harm than, the, than a normal person, than a righteous person would, than a non-righteous person would, than a non-believing person would, then the belief in God should not be relevant, right? You can believe in God, I don't care. You can choose not to believe in God. And I, I just have to, I'm baffled. Why does it matter? Why do you have to make sure that people believe in the right being? They're going to go to hell. They're going to go to hell if you don't. The Bible says this, that, one, the, that, that once you die, you have, once a man dies, he has one thing to happen, judgment. You're judged by God. Nice talking to you, bro. And you're judged by God. So according, God is going to ask you, what did you do with my son? And according to uh, what you did to, to Jesus Christ is according to what's going to happen to your soul. So being a religious person, for holding religious beliefs, believing in the one true God, is more important than being good and spreading. And spread what's good? What the, but what's your barometer for good? Tell me what's good. My parameter for good is trying to be the least amount of evil towards people. What's evil? Well, evil is again a very relative term. Amen. So good is e good is uh, good is relative. Evil is relative. So there is no good or evil. So what are you talking about? Yeah, that's what, what I'm saying. But it, that, it doesn't matter. It does matter because this is what I'm saying. I'm saying there's an absolute for good and bad. So I'm standing on a, on the side of morality. I say there's a superior being that created us and said that this is good and this is evil and even wrote those wrote those uh, good and evil traits. Or, or wrote those moral, morals in everyone's heart. That's why you're coming to me saying this is good and this is bad because my creator told you that. Now without that creator, everything is, there is no evil, there is no good, it's a free for all. We should have no laws, we should have no police because everything is just is. So you are saying that there is an absolute good and an absolute bad? Absolutely. So, let's say that a person acted absolutely good, did absolute good, but without believing in the God. That would be that would be that's physically that would be physically and spiritually impossible. So so you're saying that every good action has to be motivated by the belief in God. No, I'm saying that you said just just say someone lived their life doing all good. That's impossible. That's what I meant. What I meant is someone lived their life doing a large amount of what you would deem as absolute good things, and then they did not believe in God, and then that, that would mean they went to heaven or to hell. Sorry. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Not believing in God is actually it's actually a form of evil because you have you, you you're not believing in the one who created you. You're not and you're not accepting the sacrifice that he did for you. And another thing is, so you so what if someone goes through life, right, and they do all these all this good stuff, right? But they don't believe in God. But they also do all this bad stuff. What about the bad stuff? Are you saying that you can throw all these good things at the bad stuff and the bad stuff goes away? That's not just. So no matter how many good things you do, you still have bad things over here. What are you gonna do about these bad things? That's why we believe in Christ. Christ took all these bad things upon him, upon himself, which makes you clean and white as snow, which makes you a good person through him, makes you righteous through God. And then you don't gotta, and then there's also a pun someone who's also been punished for the bad deeds, which is just and loving at the same time. But, but why do you have to care if people believe in God? Why do I have to care? Yeah. Because I love people. And, but do people exist in heaven or hell? Pardon me? Do they exist in the afterlife? The same people. Yeah. They are the completely, same, the completely same people. Well, the, the Bible says that we uh, will have resurrected bodies, so basically what happens is your spirit leaves your body, right? And um, um, if, you, if you rejected God in this, in this life, you would also, you also your being, your, your, your essence, your spirit will also reject God in the next life, and that's what hell is. Hell is being separated from God. So right now you have this chance to choose God, and if you choose God in this life, you'll also, you also will probably want God in the next life. And so that's what we're saying. And if you don't want God in this life, you want him, we won't want God, God in the next life. Are you aware of Anselm's criteria for God? Go ahead, tell me. I can't list all of them, but some of them are being omnibenevolent, omnibenevolent and omniscient. Yep. That's God. Being all good and all knowing. That's God. If God was all good and absolute good and all knowing, yep. he would know that a person who acted well without the interest of God ha acted with absolute goodness, did an it amount of absolute abs good without God. No, no, no. There's no such thing. You're making It's not logical. There's no absolute good if you don't believe in God. Why? Because, not because human beings aren't absolute. 
Human beings are full of a whole bunch of different things. Human beings are full of good, they're full of bad, they're full of up, they're full of down, they're full of emotions. Human beings are not absolute anything across the board. I'm not, I'm not talking about an absolutely good human being. I'm talking about, no, 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 no. But we were talking about absolute, what, chicken? Go. I'm talking about an absolute good action. You said that there were absolute good and absolute bad actions. Okay, yeah, it's one action. So that doesn't make it absolute. Absolute, it means it's it's um, it mean absolute is uh, leaning across the board. It doesn't dip. It doesn't have uh, uh, valleys and uh, peaks. It's just absolute. It's just like a straight line. And 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 human beings aren't straight lines. And that's exactly where you were misunderstanding me. I'm not, I'm not saying that a person should do, you know, only absolute good things. But a person. Could you please define, give me some examples of absolute good things? Jesus. Without mentioning religion. I'm, I'm, I'm here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm a, I'm a child of God. So it's, that's, like, that's like me telling you, uh, talk about yourself or tell me about your history without talking about your dad. Jesus is my father. God is my father. So everything that I do is, is, is in him. The Bible says everything you do, do unto the Lord. Everything you do, do in the name of Jesus Christ. So I can't, you can't separate me from my Savior because he lives inside me. The Bible says go out into the world and tell them that salvation is now. Tell them that uh, Jesus has come. Tell them that they are forgiven of their sins. Tell them that they can be set free. Tell them that uh, uh, they're no longer enemies of God, but they can be called servants and friends and, and children of God. All because Christ Jesus came. All because he died on the cross and, and rose again on the third day. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.